Hello guys, this is Novo My Science Tutors Online and uh, I remain Otobo Michael. Uh, welcome to our class for today. We are looking at we are we are looking at uh, gravitational field, gravitational field, and um, we'll be discussing in this particular video. We'll cover gravitational field, and under gra gravitational field, we'll look at Newton's law of universal gravitation. We we'll also look at uh, equation of um, force of attraction between two masses under the influence of gravitational force, and then we we'll saw some problems that will help us to understand better the Newton's law of universal gravitation and the equation that is involved. So, guys, just get yourself ready, get your writing materials, get your calculators, get your papers, get your bios, and just anything that you need because you are going to solve a lot of problems in this topic and then we'll look at some other test your understanding questions so please just get yourself ready so that we can move on with this particular class but before then if you have not subscribed to this channel please what are you waiting for please subscribe to the channel give us a like so that when we upload a new video youtube will notify you instantly is that okay so subscribe help us to share this video give us a like give us a thumbs up give us a positive comment so that you can encourage us okay so this is your physics video tutorial on youtube and we are noble mind science tutors okay so straight away we are going to our class for today gravitational field what is a gravitational field So what is a gravitational field? A gravitational field is a form of force field that acts between two objects that are not in contact. Remember, we discussed um, electromagnetic waves just in a previous video. So the, in this particular video, we are looking at L gravitational field. So gravitational field is a form of force or it's a form of force field that acts between two objects that are not in contact. Okay, example, the Earth exerts a force on all falling objects. That is why it is a common experience that when an object is thrown upward, it returns to the ground. Why is it that when you throw an object upward, you come back to the ground? It is because of the force of gravity that the Earth has on the object. So that force of gravity is what pulls the object down to the earth. Okay, so that force that pulls the object down to the earth is what is called force of gravity. All right, and this force attracts every object towards the earth. So it has been postulated that gravitational fields surround every object that has a mass. So that tells you that every object that is on the Earth's surface has the effect of gravitational field around it. So that a body or a second body that is at a particular distance near the first body will experience the force of gravity because of the gravitational field that exists. So having said this, gravitational field is a region of space around a mass in which the gravitational force of the earth can be felt or experienced okay so gravitational field is a region around a body or a mass in which the gravitational force of the earth can be felt okay so gravitational field has some effect it is gravitational field that attracts objects to the earth it is gravitational field that keeps the moon in its orbit around the earth and also the earth in its orbit around the sun so these are some of the effects of gravitational force it is gravitational force or field that keeps the moon in its orbit around the earth and it's also the same gravitational field that keeps the earth in its orbit around the sun so based on this discussion we've seen that gravitational force are always forces of attraction they are always attracting always pulling one object to the other okay They're always pulling one objects one to the other so from this we've seen that gravitational force between two bodies is governed by a law 
and the law is what we are going to discuss. The law is called Newton's law of universal gravitation. Newton's law of gravity of universal gravitation. So the Newton law of gra universal gravitation states that every particle in the universe attracts every other particle with a force that is directly proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. Okay, so assuming you have two masses, M1 and M2, that are separated by a distance, R, the law states that the force of attraction between these two masses, the force of attraction or even repulsion between these two masses is directly proportional to the to the product of the masses okay that's a direct proportional to the product of the masses that's f is that proportional to m1 m2 times m2 and inverse proportional to the square root of their to the square of their distance apart this is a statement of the law and mathematically this can also be written as f is equals to when you remove this uh, proportionality sign becomes k m1 times m2 all over r square now k is equals to g k is equals to capital g and this capital g is known as what gravitational constant or universal gravitational constant and the value of g is equals to 6.67 times 10 to the power minus 11 newton meters square per kg square this is the unit of it okay so g is a constant that is known as universal gravitational constant and this is a relationship that the law of newton law of universal gravitation or Newton's law universal gravitation states okay so you have to take note of this so that we can use it to solve some problem as i said in this topic there is no much discussion we are going to solve problems that we drive on this point that we just um, discussed okay so we are going to solve some problems now so that we we'll have more understanding of the law of universal gravitation right so this is a, a a sample question that we have to solve and this question says that um an electron of mass 9.1 times 10 minus, minus 3 kg reverse around a hydrogen nucleus with a proton with a proton of mass 1.67 times 10 to the power minus 27 kg okay so if the radius of the orbit is 5.90 times 10 to the power minus 11 meters calculate the gravitational force of attraction between the proton and the electron g is given to you to be 6.67 times 10 to the power minus 11 newton meters square per kg square okay so in for this particular question you will be given an m1 like let me put it as um, mass of electron we can put it like me is given to you to be 9.1 times 10 raised to power minus 31 kg okay minus 31 kg okay then your mass of proton is given to you to be equals to um, 1.67 times 10 to the power minus 27 kg all right and then you have the distance between them which is the radius of orbit to be equal to five points that is five let me write that clearly so you have five point 
nine zero times ten is to power minus eleven times ten is to power minus eleven meters. Then G I'll be giving to you here to be this six point six seven times seven power um, minus eleven. Okay, so from the equation, from the law of universal gravitation, uh, F is equals to G times m electron times m proton all over the radius uh, squared. Okay, so this is the equation. So what you need to do is just substitute all these values, in, substitute all this into the equation. Okay, once you substitute, then you have that F is equals to um, G is six point six seven times ten is to power minus eleven multiplied by mass of electron, which is nine point one times ten is to power minus thirty one multiplied by 1.67 which is the mass of the proton times 10 raised to power minus 27 all divided by the distance 6.90 times 10 raised to power minus 11 or bracket squared. Okay, so by the time you point this out with your calculator, taking note of all these uh, exponential values, taking of, of all these exponents, by the time you point them out in your calculator, you will have that F is equal to. By the time you point this out, you will have in the first instance you have uh, the numerator to be 101.36 or times 10 to the power minus 69 or divided by 34. Points eighty one times ten raised to power minus twenty two. All right. So when you work this out with your calculator, you will have two point nine one times ten raised to power forty seven minus forty seven. Meeting as your overall answer. Okay, so the force of attraction between the proton and the electron will be equals to 2.91 times 0 by minus 47 over n. Now, what you should take note of is how you manipulate your, your way through with this um, um, these indexes. Okay, these indices. You should remember your indices in. Um, in mathematics so that you know that um, when you have a multiplication sign you are supposed to add and when you have division sign you're supposed to minus so if you apply that to all this you will to get these indices and then know how to manipulate through so that's okay because these indices are very very important okay they are very very important you don't want to make mistakes in getting those indices that's why i just did this first big round then you should know how to manipulate and get to this side. Okay, so this is for this particular question. I hope this one is clear. I hope this one is clear. Once you know what you are looking for, you know the equation to apply, and then your answer comes up ready. Okay, so this one, I think it is easy and clear. Let's go to another question. Okay, so this is another sample question. And um, 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 uh, this is a jam question. 
actually then the first one we did is a wire question okay so this one says that a force of 20 newton has between two bodies at a certain distance apart the value of the force when the distance is halved is what okay so for this particular one you are giving the force to be equals to um to be equals to 200 newton okay then the distance is uh, the distance is given to you to be assuming the distance is going to be to be arrow one so this one is like your f1 and this is your arrow one then your f2 is what you're actually looking for which you don't know then uh, which you don't know okay following the statement of the question you don't know f2 because that's what you're looking for then your arrow 2 uh, the you said that arrow 2 is, um, is equals to half of arrow 1 when the distance is half so if arrow 1 is half this will be your arrow 2 half of your arrow 1 okay now from the law of universal gravitation we told that f is inversely proportional to square of the distance yeah this is what we are told f is inversely proportional to the square of the distance that's what we are told so if you apply this you will now see that f f is equals to f1 arrow 1 squared be equals to f2 arrow 2 squared okay so because this equation will give you that f arrow squared is equals to a constant okay so this is what you will have from this equation f arrow squared is equals to is equals to a constant so with that you can have this equation then what you do is substitute all these values into this uh, equation f1 is 200 uh, newton 200 newton and arrow 1 squared is there then you have f2 is what you are looking for and then arrow 2 this is arrow 2 so you see arrow 2 squares arrow 1 all over 2 or squared okay so this can give you this is 200 times arrow 1 squared is equals to f2 times arrow 1 squared all over 4 all right so what are we looking for we are looking for f2 actually okay we are looking for f2 actually okay so if we now make f2 the subject of the formula we have that 200 we have that 200 multiplied by arrow 1 squared times 4 all over arrow 1 squared is equals to f2 okay so this cancels out so that your f2 will now be 800 is equals to f2 so the force will be equals to 800 uh, newton so your f2 is equals to 800 newton okay so this is your f2 f2 is equals to 800 uh, newton so you see the way i was able to bring up that equation for universal gravitation take note of what i did here I read the law and I brought this one out. Okay, because the law says that the force of attraction is directly proportional to the product of the masses, but directly proportional to the square of their distance apart. So, in this particular question, you are giving the force and you are giving their distance apart. 
So you can actually pick up the part that relates the first to the center part and use to solve for the problem that you want to solve, depending on the question that you are giving. Okay, I hope this is clear and this is understood. Okay, these are simple mathematics that you need to find a way around and understand, but just understand the question so that you can know how to manipulate your way through. Okay, so please try and understand if you don't understand you can repeat and repeat until you get the understanding you can repeat the video until you get the understanding but uh, try to break this uh, this problem down so that you can follow through and understand it okay so let's try another question too Alright, so this is another question. This one is like the first one that we did. So uh, I don't need to dwell too much on this, but I will still solve it. But please, if you understood the first one we did, this one is supposed to be very easy and simple for you to do. Okay, so we know that the law states that F is equals to what? G M 1 M 2 all over arrow squared. This is what you should write down first. Right? So once you are written this one, what do you need to do? Look at what you are giving. You are giving the mass of electron and the mass of proton. So M electron is given to you to be what? 9.0 times 10 raised to power minus 31. As I said, this question is like the one I've saw before. Okay, so you should not find the mass of proton is given to you, which is MP, is given to you to be 1.67 times 10 raised to the power minus 27 kg. I did this question and that one, they almost look alike. Okay, mm -hmm. then you are also giving the, the average distance apart, arrow to be equals to what? 0 0.5 0 0.53 times 10 raised to the power minus 10 meters and your g you already know okay so if you know all this what you now need to do is to substitute all these values into this equation that is here okay just like as we did in the former case so you can you now have that f is equals to your g G is equals to what? This G is given to you here to be 6.67 times 10 raised to power minus 11 multiplied by the mass of your electron 9.0 times 10 raised to power minus 31 multiplied by mass of proton 1.67 times 10 raised to the power minus 27. Okay, divide all this by the square of that distance part 0 0.53 uh, times 10 raised to the power minus uh, 10 minus 10 all squared. So you have to square this fine so if you follow the way we did the first one if you follow the way we did the first one and you solve it out you will have that f will be equals to what 3.57 times 10 raised to power minus 47 newton okay so follow the way we did the first one and this answer this problem will just come and trade it out this this one is not difficult anymore as far as you understand this uh, as far as you understand this formula and its application it becomes cd you know, know the two masses you know the distance apart you know the uh, value of the gravitational constant you just apply them into this equation that's okay then you answer comes directly these are equations that you should know as a wise student in NECO 
a jam student or you are preparing for your IGC, any of these examinations that this equation should just come out readily in your memory okay so i hope this is clear and you have understood how to apply these equations to solve any problems on gravitational force or universal gravitation and you've understood the newton's law of universal gravitation okay so right now I want to go to your test page okay so this is your test your understanding page and all these questions they are just like a repetition of what we've done before please try your answer them right try your answer them manipulate through the equation like in this one you need to calculate the distance so do your manipulations and then get the distance from this particular equation okay so if you have any challenge please reach out to us through our whatsapp number okay so this year we are stopping this lecture for today but before i leave please if you are not subscribed to this channel what are you waiting for we are here to make physics as simple as possible for you so please subscribe to this channel give us a like so that when we upload a new video youtube will notify you and tell you that a new video has been uploaded in normal science tutorials uh, website is that okay so please i remain on top of my care thank you so much for your time reach us to the whatsapp number that's showing on your screen you can click on the links to our videos and it will take you to the video direct also invite your friends uh invite your friends so that they come and enjoy what you are enjoying on youtube thank you and we appreciate you please give us a like give us a thumb or thumbs up give us positive comment right so that we'll continue to give you more videos we are trying to cover the full curriculum of physics for west african students and if you are watching this video from any part of the world i am sure that physics topics are almost generally the same so wherever you are watching it from any part of the world these lectures these videos this series channel is for your benefits okay so tell your friends and invite others to come and watch this video thank you so much we appreciate you we'll see you in our next class thanks